Hi. Today we're going to be looking at an element of science called physics, and that part of physics we're going to be looking at today relates to the way gases are treated. Now, gas laws. Gases behave in a very particular style. There are three main gas laws. Boyle's law, Charles law, and the combined laws. But today we're going to just concentrate on the first of the three. We're going to concentrate on Boyle's law. Now, Boyle's law. If you imagine a gas, in your mind's eye, think of particles of gas all zipping round the room. Now, most of you will have had bicycles. If you haven't got bicycles now, you all pump up tyres on a bicycle, and with a bicycle pump, there's a piston. And you, as you push the piston down, what is happening to the air particles, the air molecules in that bicycle pump? Richard, what do you think is happening? They're being、um, compact. They're being pushed together, aren't they? Yeah, and they're pushing, they're forcing against the piston that you're pushing down with your arm, and they're pushing against the sides of the pump. And there's only one place for them to go. Abby, where can all that gas that's under pressure in your bicycle pump? Where can it go? Only one place. Into the tire. Into the tire, and of course the rubber walls of the tire and the inner tube are stopping the gas getting out. You put a lot of pressure in there, Sammy. You put a lot of pressure in those bicycle tires. What's the tire feel like? Hard. Of course it does. It gets very, very hard, doesn't it? Because there's a huge amount of pressure in there. There's lots of molecules bashing against the side. Well, let's look how the, the, the laws that affect these gases. Okay. So gas laws. Our first one that we're looking at, Boyle's law, applies only to closed systems. And of course, gas laws. If you have that same bicycle tire. And you leave it out in the sun; those molecules they get like hyperactive, and they get energy from the sun, and they want to move about more. And the temperature plays a big part on it as well. Okay, with our first、uh, slide that relates to Boyle's law, there's a picture that depicts what's going on in a bicycle pump, essentially, isn't it? If you think the little purple dots they represent the gas particles or the air molecules. All happily zigzagging around inside the bicycle pump, inside the the chamber of the piston. P1 is the chamber of the piston that you're pushing down. P2 shows the gas compressed, and it shows the same number of molecules, the same amount of gas. But what's happened to the space that it now occupies? Let's think about what's happened to the space, Katie. In the second one, what's happened to the space that those air molecules have got? It's got smaller. It's got a lot smaller, hasn't it? So the volume has got smaller. The same number of particles are there, but of course the pressure has now increased as well. So we know from Boyle's law that if the if the temperature remains the same in a closed pressure, and this is some very difficult words, pressure varies inversely with volume. So pressure. Varies against the amount of volume. We can write a formula for that. P one v one equals P two v two. Now that that sounds initially quite complex, but when we go through a worked example, it's not perhaps as complex as you might first think. We're going to have a look at a little question now. If a cylinder has fifty milliliters of gas under two atmospheres pressure. What will be the volume of gas at five atmospheres pressure? Well, let's talk about what's going on. A cylinder. Now, that could just be what we were saying, like a bicycle pump. A cylinder with fifty milliliters. The pressure increases from two to five atmospheres pressure. So we're pushing down on the piston. Now we've got to try and calculate by using P one v one, P two v two. What's going to be Um, <clears throat> the volume after the pressure has increased. Now this is going to help us a little bit. I've put the question on the right-hand side in purple, and we're going to go step by step through this. With any question that relates to gas laws, you've got to focus firstly on the formula, which you know, P1 V1 equals P2 V2, and you've got to know what data you've been given. And substitute that data into the formula. No more complex than that. Our formula: 
and that's substituting some of the information that we've got. Starting pressure we're already given and we're already given volume. 50 times 2 equals 5. Where's the 5 come from? Where do you think the 5 in the second part of the equations come from? Chris? From the 5 atmospheres pressure. That's it. Once the, push, once the person has pushed down on the piston, the pressure has increased from 2 bar pressure or 2 atmosphere pressure to 5. Fantastic. Good. And the one that we need to find out is, of course, the, the volume afterwards. Well, let's have a look. What, what have we done here? We First of all, we've multiplied the 50 in brackets by the 2 in brackets. Because the brackets are side by side, it means we must multiply the two of them together. So 50 times 2, very straightforward, that's 100. Now, because we want the V2 on its own, we have to get rid of the 5. And of course, with equations, if we want to get rid of something on one side, we can divide it by 5. That gets rid of the 5 on the right-hand side. But if we do something to the right-hand side, we must do it to the left-hand side as well. So the 100 has to be divided by 5. Now, if you follow very carefully, is there anyone at this point who thinks they might know what the volume could be for V2? When the pressure is increased to 5 atmospheres. Chris? 20. 20. And I think 20 is going to be absolutely right. Can anyone tell me what the unit is that we're using? Richard? Millilitres. Millilitres. Absolutely fantastic. And there it is. Once the pressure has increased to 5 atmospheres, so the volume then becomes 20 millilitres. And we know, don't we? We know that once you increase... If we applied that back to our original concept of the bicycle pump, you increase the pressure, the volume has now got smaller, but of course, you know, we've still got the same amount of gas in there, but a much higher pressure. The unit there of millilitres. Can anyone think of another unit that we use that is the same as millilitres, but a different name? Often you might find that millilitres are shown as centimetres cubed. One millilitre equals one centimetre cubed. That's great. That's our, a, a quick introduction to what's going on with Boyle's Law. Next time we're going to look at how temperature affects law, and we're going to go on to Charles' Law. And the lesson after that, we're going to move on to the combined laws of how both temperature and pressure affect volumes of gas. Lewis? In science, I'm sure we measured um, volume in something else, but I can't remember. Yes, usually uh, in, in science now, we would measure in two different ways, either in millilitres, as you know, you buy Coca-Cola in, in litre bottles or two litre bottles, and a millilitre is a thousandth of a litre, but also, you will have seen it measured in measuring cylinders or, and in flasks in centimetres cubed. And one millilitre equals one centimetre cubed. And if you could imagine uh, one tiny centimetre of a cube of liquid. Okay, thank you. Good, good question there. Any other questions? Richard? Why does temperature affect pressure? Well, if you imagine uh, uh, gases, they are made up of many, many particles and molecules together. And a little bit like, uh, uh, like us, if you have too much heat, you get a bit you get a bit agitated, and the molecules they get very agitated, and they get more energy, and they move around faster. If you could imagine in your mind's eye all the particles zipping around, moving about, you put more heat onto them, and they move faster. Now that doesn't present a major problem unless you're talking about something like a, a very dangerous gas like butane or propane, where if it's subject to high amounts of heat you know, there is a risk that the pressure could increase so much the metal cylinder that it's containing could burst or rupture and release flammable gas. So that's a very good question. Well done, Richard. Good. Okay. If there are no more questions, next time we will speak about Charles' Law. Thank you very much.